9.25. Madam President. Um, Senator Nino. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I move that the uh, uh, vote on Senate File 925 be postponed until such time as we have a completed fiscal note. Um, on the motion. Madam President. Uh, Senator Nino. Thank you, Madam President. I would request a roll call vote on that motion. Uh, members, the reason I'm making this motion, I sat in on the Rules Committee. <laughs> uh, I do not serve on rules, but I did sit in and listen to the debate. Uh, apparently late yesterday, uh, Senator Limmer uh, was given a preliminary fiscal note on this bill. The preliminary, which is just a, a quick cursory review of what costs might be incurred by the state of Minnesota, shows just short of $700,000. Uh, in the out years for 2014 at 631,000, but it does ramp up to $688,000. Uh, there was some discussion in the committee about uh, Senator Newman uh, talked about some uh, changes he tried to make in uh, various laws in the past and the tremendous impact to the courts and the cost. Uh, there, it, it, it <laughs> let me be clear, members, a vote in support of my motion is not a vote against the bill. Let me just be clear. A vote in support of my motion is not a vote against the bill. It's not going to prevent a future vote on the bill. It simply says that we should do our due diligence as a body here, representing taxpayers of the state of Minnesota, and wait when we have a preliminary note that says, yes, there will be a cost, maybe upwards of a million dollars. We should wait until we have a completed fiscal note and see what that says and determine whether we should re-refer this bill back to a finance committee or whether we should take it up on this floor without going through a finance committee first. Uh, members, the right thing to do when there's a bill that's gonna cost us a million dollars or more or half a million dollars is to run it through a fiscal committee, a budget committee, so that they can account for that in their budget. Otherwise, in a year when we have a budget deficit, we're spending money that we don't have and we haven't budgeted for. Uh, so all I'm asking is just to delay this for a few days so that we can get a completed fiscal note before we take up the question of adopting the committee report. Members are reminded that uh, when you're speaking, you should face the front of the chamber and direct your remarks to the president. Senator Bach. Uh, Madam President, I impose a call of the Senate. Senate is under call. Senator Bach. Uh, Madam President, I move that further proceedings under the roll call be dispensed with and Sergeant Arms be instructed to bring in the absent members. On that motion, all in favor, please say aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion prevails. Motion prevails. The Sergeant at Arms will bring in the absent members. Is there any discussion on the Ninau motion? Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, might be uh, wise to have a little discussion of why this motion is before us. Uh, most of the members are not members of the Rules Committee. And just to bring you up to speed as we're waiting for members to show up, uh, yesterday, as most of us knew, that Senate Bill 925 was discussed deliberated and voted on and ultimately passed in the Judiciary Committee. At that time, I did not have access to any type of fiscal note, although I had requested one the week before. About an hour, a little about an hour, hour and a half after the committee hearing had its hearing, uh, we got the preliminary report stating that there was a cost to Senator Dibble's bill. 
And the preliminary cost, this is not a complete one, but the preliminary cost just on health insurance issues alone uh, have, have totaled up to almost two-thirds of a million dollars. And in the discussion and rules, we also discussed the potential cost that has yet to be recognized, and that's the court costs as we, ex if we do expand the definition of marriage to same-sex couples, there would be a triggering of a cost on our courts. The reason being is that now that we're creating a union between another group of people, that's going to impact the cost. The cost of divorce certainly would go up. Costs of probate, other legal procedures would also be triggered that are unique to a marriage, and that, <clears throat> and that, that cost has not been recognized not only in the pre preliminary report, but also in any consideration that we're making regarding the potential debate in the future regarding Senate File 925. So I think the motion is an appropriate one to bring forward. I'll have to admit the Rules Committee did not uh, accept the argument. They've decided that even though there's a preliminary cost and there's even more costs that has yet to be recognized, they decided to advance this bill without a financial analysis. That's what your choice is now, is to consider that if we do consider a step like this, we should have our eyes wide open and realize all the ramifications of going toward this policy. And that's why this question is before us now, Madam President. Is there further discussion on the need now um, motion? Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President. And to the, to the amendment, would Senator Cohen, chair of the Finance Committee, yield uh, Senator, for a question? Senator Ingebrigtsen, it's actually a motion. It's not an amendment. It's a motion to postpone. Okay, Madam okay. President, thank you. Um, well, just I'll make some comments then with regards to the... To uh, the Senator Ingebrigtsen, you can still ask someone to... Um, to yield, I was just saying it's not a, it's not an amendment; it's an motion to postpone considering the committee report. And, and, and Madam and Madam President, a for point of clarity for me then, it was with regards to the finance portion of this of this bill is what I'm what I'm going to question Senator Cohen for if he would yield. And that's perfectly appropriate, uh, Senator Cohen. Do you yield? He yields, Senator Th Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President, Senator Cohen. Uh, my experience over the last years on the Finance Committee, uh, and especially the last two, two uh, uh, were, I believe you were the lead on the committee uh, when you were in the minority, and you made it very clear, uh, very clear, uh, I'm not even going to guess as to how many times you made it clear that uh, uh, bills coming forward without fiscal notes uh, would not be allowed uh, under, your, under your chairmanship. I guess the question I'm asking very simply, uh, is this a pattern that we're going to be seeing here? Is, this, is there going to be more bills coming forward uh, that you as the chair are not going to request fiscal notes to come before the committee that I sit on that you chair? Is this, is this setting some kind of a trend? I, I certainly hope not, and I, I, uh, I would like Senator Cohen to give us a little flavor as to the next uh, two months. Before I call on uh, Senator Cohen, I would remind members uh, to be very careful about the language you use in terms of the possibility of questioning a member's motives. Senator Cohen. Uh, Madam President, Senator Ingebrigtsen, um, let me make a couple things clear. Um, because we've had this question in the Finance Committee this year. Y yes, we're going to have fiscal notes. However, what I saw in the Rules Committee was uh, a preliminary fiscal note. I've asked. I, I, I did not bring, I'm, I'm going to get the full preliminary fiscal note to, in a minute. I just got the one page passed off by Senator Limmer. Um, there are two things relative to the Action of the Rules Committee. The first is this was only a preliminary fiscal note. Now, we haven't stopped, as best I know, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think I questioned, uh, say when I was the, uh, the lead minority member, I don't think I questioned the uh, 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 absence of a fiscal note where we only had a preliminary, I'm sorry, l l l let me correct that. I did not question the presentation of a bill where all we had in front of us was a preliminary fiscal note. 
It's exactly what it suggests, a preliminary fiscal note. In this instance, the preliminary fiscal note is, uh, if, and Senator Ingebrigtsen, if you were present in the Rules Committee and heard the discussion, is built on several assumptions. That's why it's a preliminary note. It's built on several assumptions. And uh, I don't know if members who are not in the Rules Committee want me to go through that, but if you look on page four of the preliminary fiscal note, where they talk about the number of employees, it's based upon uh, an assumption of the number of, uh, based on the U.S. Census, unmarried partners slash non-spousal households. Then we take the estimate of unmarried partners, without specifying if it's uh, uh, same-sex or uh, uh, heterosexual unmarried partners. Then we take the estimate of the same-sex households. Then we take the estimate of those who might marry, and then we try to determine that based upon how many prospectively state employees there are. That's why this is a preliminary note. And so I think it's very tough to make a decision based on that. Second, it was pointed out by, I believe, Senator Marty in the committee that uh, uh, the governor has already included this in his uh, budget proposal. So we already have it taken into account. Uh, he has sa said that the contracts uh, would have domestic partnerships. So we're already taking that into account in terms of determination of the budget. So based upon both those considerations, uh, it struck me that uh, this would not be uh, necessarily uh, a mandate to have it brought to the Finance Committee. should also mention, Madam President, Senator Ingebrigtsen, that as you know from watching some of the debate in, in the Rules Committee, um, I was caught a little bit unaware, had not seen the preliminary note that uh, Senator Limmer had distributed to the Rules Committee. And as a consequence, uh, I, I wasn't on, on quite as firm ground at the outset, but having then had a chance to look at it, uh, t t take, took into consideration Senator Marty's comment, it strikes me that uh, we do not see, need to see this bill in the Finance Committee. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, to, to Senator uh, Cohen's comments, and, and, and uh, I would ask that if he would yield for just one more question. Senator Cohen, would you yield? He does. Senator Ingram. Thank you, Madam President. And Senator Cohen, you've made my point, quite frankly. You're talking about preliminary. You're talking about estimations. That's what we do. That's what we do in the, those are the kind of questions we ask in the Finance Committee, uh, as you very well know. And, and uh, uh, I did sit in a little bit on the rules, but I, I had to get up and leave for the Environment Division Committee but um, your comment with regards to the first time you have seen this document was from Senator Limmer. I believe you said that at the finance, or excuse me, at the rules committee. I think that begs another question. Um, are we going to be required to, to bring forth, as a minority, to bring forth Fiscal notes for the majority on their bills. I'm, 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 I'm really quite, I'm really quite perplexed as to how you're approaching this. And, and again, I would really like to see if there's, if there's going to be any kind of a fiscal note. I know you've been very insistent on that and watching out uh, with a watchful eye of the, uh, of the uh, budget, uh, the years I've known you. And I guess I, I still would wonder why we wouldn't bring this back to the budget committee. Senator Cohen, Madam President, and, and Senator Ingebrigtsen. Let me suggest, and, and as you know, I, I chaired the Finance Committee for eight years prior to when we were in the minority, now have resumed the chairmanship. But let me make it uh, very clear. The fiscal staff has never been obligated, uh, and this predates when I was chairman, I can promise you. This goes back to when I first served on the Finance Committee under the chairmanship of Senator Miriam, who was as much of a stickler as, as anybody in this place. Um, the fiscal staff has never been obligated to present a preliminary fiscal note to myself as chair of the Finance Committee or to the full Finance Committee. We've never done that as a matter of course. Now, members have asked for preliminary uh, fiscal notes to be presented, as was the case with Senator Limmer. Um, I might ask if I have some questions for a preliminary fiscal note, but we've never done that. Uh, so. I need to ask you to make that distinction between the preliminary note 
and the fiscal note. Senator Ingebrigtsen. Thank you, Madam President. And I'll just make a comment with regards to what I know between a preliminary and a regular one. It would be that uh, my question uh, that I'm just simply asking and, and making the body aware of and, and maybe throwing this out that, that and, and maybe, well, I'm sorry, Madam President, I'd, I'd like to ask uh, Senator Cohen if he'd yield for just one more question with regards to his last comment. Senator Cohen, do you yield? Yes. Thank he you, yields. Madam President. Senator Should this preliminary note have shown $2 million worth of potential cost to the state of Minnesota, would we be bringing this back? Or would we be moving it forward as quickly as we are on the floor without first going before the finance? If this particular 688,000 were to be, oh, even one and a half or $2 million, would it move forward with uh, your same kind of a description? Senator Cohen. Well, Madam President, Senator Ingrits, and again, you're suggesting a hypothetical, and that's my concern with this preliminary note. It's a hypothetical and a hypothetical and a hypothetical and a hypothetical. Now you've presented another hypothetical, and the answer would be no. I would uh, remind members with regard to uh, questions that according to Mason's section 114, um, <clears throat> A question should not be permitted which reflects upon the character or conduct of any member or upon the executive or other official. A question as to what course a member proposes to follow is not in order. Senator Limmer. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Madam President, uh, would Senator Cohen yield? Senator Cohen, do you yield? Senator Cohen? Yes, he yields. Yeah. Senator right. uh, Limmer, but please remember to address the President, even in asking your question. Madam President, I'm going to ask a question now. Yes. All right. Thank you, Madam President. Madam President and members, I've been around here a long time, and Senator Cohen was, will often remind us that he, too, has been here a long time. I might have started in the House, he might tell you. Uh, at the time that he began, but I think he preceded my time in the Senate, and certainly I think even in the House. Uh, Senator Cohen, I don't really remember when you began as a finance chair. Um, might be because it's so long ago, but you've been, but I want to say some words that at risk might, might end up in one of your campaign reports, maybe in an attempt to win a primary election sometime in the future. And I'm going to say this, and it's a compliment. Uh, you have been a very effective chairman of the Finance Committee as you've been in your service to the state of Minnesota. I don't think there's a single dollar that you've ever not examined. You've carefully scrutinized the books of the people of the state of Minnesota, and I think that's a tremendous asset for our state. So it kind of perplexes me that we have a hint from our finance people that there's an expense, a preliminary expense, and it's not even the entire analysis, that two-thirds of a million dollars is sitting on this piece of paper, and there may be a question of how they arrived at that. Is it a true um, premise or is it not? And I'm not sure why we wouldn't want to examine it. I would tend to think that that's our responsibility whether it's $638,000 or if it's $63,800,000 or maybe even down to the scrutiny that you've represented, maybe 63 bucks is something that we should scrutinize. And if the premise is inaccurate, we can dismiss it. But if the premise is accurate or if it leads us to more expenses, then I would think that it's the duty of our body to carefully examine this expense and the ramifications and the financial consequences if this bill is passed. I'm kind of surprised that we're even having this discussion, but to tell you the truth, I think it's now the responsibility of our Senate body to now come to the point of are we going to consider bringing this to the best 
Finance Committee that we have seen in a long time, chaired and led by one of the best chairmen of the Finance Committees in the state of Minnesota in the history. And now we're getting to the point that there's some reason created that a premise might be wrong, so it might or it might not be accurate. I'm just surprised, Madam Chair, or Madam President and Senator Cohen, that we're having this discussion. I think any expense that we have on any bill needs to go to Finance Committee. And I hope you all agree and join with the scrutiny that's been represented in the past by one of the best finance chairs that we have in the history of our state. Senator Lemmer, I, I failed to find a question in your speech. Uh, is there further discussion? Uh, Senator Cohen? Well, Madam President, let me answer the question Senator Lemmer posed. The answer is 2003. Um, I think that was the question I heard. That's when I became chairman of the Finance Committee originally. And Madam Chair, if you'll allow me, um, after those compliments. It's uh, President. I, I, I'm uh, sorry, Senator Madam Cohen. President. I'm the Senator Lemmer, I'm going to look at the composite of the finance chairman in my office when I get back downstairs, the folks from 1870 and 1880, and I'm going to tell them I'm every bit their equal. And I also want to mention, Senator Limmer, you are without question the nicest, best, greatest senator from Maple Grove I've ever known. Is there further discussion on the uh, Nenal motion? Uh, senator Eaton. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to request a roll call. Roll call has been requested. Senator uh, uh, Newman. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, just a few thoughts uh, regarding the motion to send this back to the uh, Finance Committee, and I'm, uh, I'm rising in support of the motion. Uh, I sit on both the Rules Committee, where uh, we just discussed this matter, and I sit on the uh, Finance Committee, and quite candidly, I really would like to see a fiscal note on this uh, bill, if for no other reason, if it's going to tell us that there is no fiscal impact. At this point, I stand here and I honestly don't know whether or not there will be a fiscal impact on the state of Minnesota with this bill or not. Candidly, I strongly suspect that there will be, and I would like to know what that is. And when I say that I strongly suspect that there will be a fiscal impact, I have in mind uh, the, the uh, special relationship that the state of Minnesota has historically recognized uh, uh, in the area of marriage. And when I think about... Senator Newman, please confine your comments to the motion, which is to postpone and send the... Uh, until the Finance Committee has, uh, uh, has a chance to consider it. It is not on the underlying bill. Madam President, that is precisely the direction that I am heading in. When I think in terms of the, the motion in support of a fiscal note, I am put in mind of the, the relationship of marriage and what it means in terms of our uh, statutes in Minnesota. There are work comp statutes, there are unemployment uh, uh, statutes, there are probate statutes, uh, there, are, there are laws that involve survivor's benefits, there are laws that involve disability benefits, all of which are special to the marriage relationship. And I want to know if this bill is adopted, whether or not there will be a fiscal impact. Specifically, I have in mind the reviser of statutes. Now, I have not gone through the, 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 the various bills that the reviser of statutes would, or I'm sorry, statutes that the reviser of statutes would have to address but I'm thinking in terms of probate laws, I'm thinking in terms of the work comp and the unemployment. What about the dissolution laws, child custody laws, uh, child support laws? There are innumerable statutes in the state of Minnesota that, uh, that specifically address the marriage relationship. And I want to know whether or not it is going to cost the state of Minnesota money in order to, uh, to support this bill if it is in fact adopted. And I, and I really believe, I sincerely believe, and I'm not commenting on the, the underlying bill, I think it's going to cost the state of Minnesota a bunch of money. If for no other reason than to send a reviser of statute in to our Minnesota statutes, 
and address the impact of this bill. And I think that that impact is going to be significant. If I'm wrong, so be it. But I really, really do uh, uh, request a, a vote in support of this bill so that we can see whether or not there will be a fiscal impact. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator uh, Newman. Uh, Senator Westrom. Thank you, Madam President. Would the author of the, of the uh, bill, uh, Senator Dibble, yield for a question? Uh, Senator Dibble's not on the floor at the moment. Would you like uh, I, never mind. Uh, he is returning to his desk. Madam uh, but would you just wait until he gets there? Sure. Uh, Senator Westrom. Madam President, the question I would have for the author of the bill. Uh, Senator Dibble, do you yield to a question? He does. Senator has, Senator Westrom. Has a fiscal note been requested, and if, if so, what does that fiscal note show? Senator Dibble. Uh, Madam President, I think Senator Limmer asked for a fiscal note. And um, we have on our desk a, what is termed a preliminary fiscal note. And, um, and also, I, I think I saw a copy of it in rules. A number of state agencies reported uh, no fiscal impact. Um, the Office of Management and Budget uh, showed uh, preliminarily, so hypothetically, um, that 100 or so um, uh, folks might uh, enroll their partners in health care. And so internal to the uh, State Employees Insurance Fund, um, there might be an impact of around 600 or so $1,000. Senator Westrom. Um, Madam President, uh, thank you, uh, Senator Dibble. I think the answer is no, uh, that you haven't requested a fiscal note. Uh, uh, sounds like Senator Limmer has requested one and uh, we'll have one coming. Uh, uh, would, Senator, uh, would the Senator of the Finance, uh, Chair of the Finance Committee, Senator Cohen, yield, Madam President? Senator Dibble. Oh, uh, Mr. Senator Cohen. Oh, Senator Cohen, I'm sorry. Uh, I was distracted. Uh, Senator Cohen, do you yield to a question from Senator Westrom? He does. Senator Westrom. Madam President, the question I have for the chairman of the Finance Committee is, uh, is, is the standard that the author of a bill needs to request a fiscal note, and if they don't, therefore the presumption can be there's no cost? Senator Cohen. Uh, Madam President, Senator Westrom, the author is not required to request a fiscal note. Um, if a bill is sent to the Finance Committee and it does not have a fiscal note, I might inquire of the author or the fiscal staff as to whether or not there is a fiscal note, but authors are not required uh, at any point to request a fiscal note. Um, many do, but it's not required. Senator Westrom. So, Madam President, uh, if the senator would continue to yield. I beg pardon, Senator whom? Senator, if the senator would continue to yield, uh, yeah. uh, Senator, senator Cohen. Senator uh, Cohen, would you yield to a further question? He does. Senator Westrom. Madam President, uh, Senator Cohen, uh, then can we presume, uh, based on the treatment of this bill, that if an author doesn't request a fiscal note, goes through committee, uh, we can just send the bill to the floor uh, as long as there's no fiscal note. Senator, I uh, again uh, refer you to um, questions are as to what course a member proposes to follow is not in order. But if Senator Cohen wants to respond generally, he certainly may. Senator Cohen. Uh, Madam President, Senator Westrom, uh, if a bill comes, let, let's say hypothetically, and we're not talking about this bill, but uh, there's a bill that comes to the floor, it's sent from one of the policy committees, from the Environment Committee, the Education Committee, and it's noted uh, either by myself or, you know, you know, the chief fiscal analyst or the fiscal analyst for the division that there's an appropriation section in the bill, and yet it wasn't sent to the Finance Committee and there was no fiscal note. Uh, under those circumstances, 
where it's very clear, uh, I would then ask that the bill be sent to the Finance Committee and, would, and I might then ask for the preparation of a fiscal note. Um, on the other hand, in this particular instance, the bill is not going to the Finance Committee. Members are once again reminded to face the front of the chamber and address your comments to the President. Senator Westrom. Well, Madam uh, President, uh, I, I'm still learning uh, the procedures of the Senate, but uh, generally they're similar to the House that we had and uh, the Ways and Com Means Committee in the House usually uh, brought in things that would have a fiscal note or if there was some question about a fiscal note. Uh, today I think we've had the issue raised that there could be a, a fiscal note uh, or a cost to this bill that we want to uh, hold up and wait and see. Uh, it sounds like the finance cha chair uh, and the finance committee uh, isn't concerned about that. And uh, uh, what I heard from the last answer, uh, Madam President and uh, members, is that if there's not a lang language in the bill that directly says an appropriation, then then the default uh, would be that we can go to the House or the Senate floor for uh, uh, passage. And so, uh, Madam President. Uh, I just want to make sure we get on the record what the procedure is going to be so all of uh, us senators, uh, new, uh, newer and uh, more veteran, uh, will know the procedures that are going to go on and uh, this will help establish that. Uh, Senator Westrom, I can only say that comparing the rules of the Senate to the rules of the House in a favorable manner is considered heresy. Madam President. Senator Westrom. Po point well taken, uh, but I'm uh, just wanting to understand the difference, and now I understand there is a difference. Senator Lemmer. Thank you, Madam President. I wanted to uh, emphasize the observation from Senator Newman regarding legal costs, as if I can direct your attention to the preliminary report uh, just down from the, from the uh, title uh, reflecting the bill's uh, focus, the agencies that are reflected here, you will not see courts, court services, civil, um, the civil legal services, anything like that regarding that third branch of government. That's not listed. This is just a preliminary view of agencies, and I think Senator Newman's comments regarding all of the other areas, divorce law, family law, child custody, insur insurance costs, probate, civil legal costs, filings, real estate law that is uniquely uh, recognized marriage relationships in its tenancy laws are all affected and they all could trigger disputes uh, regarding this area of law within a marriage umbrella discussion. There definitely will be costs, and I'm fearful that we're going to ignite costs that we don't have coverage in our budget for. This is a legitimate discussion, and it should be one that's appropriate for our Senate. Senator Eaton. Senator Benson. Um, Thank you, Madam President. I was just doing some research back on a bill that I worked on last year. Had a zero fiscal note, but there was a $10,000 impact, potential impact on the Senate budget. And I recall very clearly how frustrated I was when Senator Cohen stood up and reminded us that just because there's a zero fiscal note doesn't mean it doesn't need to go to the Finance Committee for a look because it does have impact on other sources of funding. So I wanted to remind the body that for $10,000, I was asked to have my bill re-referred. Is there further discussion on the Nenow Amendment? A uh, motion, rather. Uh, Senator Nenow. Thank you, Madam President. And um, well, maybe I'll make some final remarks. It looks like I have another senator that wants to, to speak first. Uh, so uh, I, will, I will wait, Madam President. Uh, senator Sengem, did you wish to speak? Uh, Madam President, yeah, yes, just briefly. Uh, Senator Sengem. Madam President, uh, this is a significant bill. Uh, I think it's important that we do it right and do it according to the procedure of the Senate. 
adds credibility to what we do and how we do it. And uh, I would certainly urge support for the Nino motion to re-refer this back. Uh, again, it's significant. It ought to be done right. It ought to be done according to our procedures. Um, Senator Senjim, it is not a re-referral. It is to postpone. The motion is to postpone. Uh, Madam Chair, I would support a postponement, and it just simply needs to be done correctly. Senator Nino. Thank you, Madam President. And uh, for the member's benefit, we're, we're kind of getting into some technical procedural stuff, so I just want to make sure everyone understands what this motion is, what it does, what it doesn't do. Uh, as the, the President uh, highlighted, uh, this is simply asking that we delay the vote until after we can get a completed version of this preliminary fiscal note. Uh, this does not prevent a vote, doesn't stop a vote, doesn't even hint that we're not going to vote. It just says wait till we get a fiscal note so then we can decide. The decision at that point will be, and I, if, if my motion does pass, I expect that uh, we will get a fiscal note and we will come to a vote on adopting this committee report. And the deci decision at that point will be, do we simply adopt the committee report, put the bill on general orders before the Senate, or are the dollar figures large enough in here that we're concerned and we want the uh, Finance Committee to take a look at that and budget for it? That's what I'm asking for, is the opportunity for us to make an informed decision. Right now we have a slightly informed opportunity, but not fully informed. And I appreciate the comments that Senator Cohen made about there being a lot of questions on, on the fiscal impact. And, and he's right, because this is only a preliminary fiscal note. And he makes my argument for me that we, that we should wait till we have a completed fiscal note and all of those questions have been answered so that we understand what all assumptions are being made within the fiscal note. And we see what the fiscal professionals have ultimately concluded as to the ultimate cost or savings, they, they could, I suppose theoretically, they could come back and tell us it saves us money. Uh, and members, I don't care what the bill is or if this happened in the future, what the bill would be. I would make this same motion because it's the right thing to do. We have a fiduciary responsibility to the taxpayers of Minnesota and quite frankly, a fiduciary responsibility to the budget areas to make sure that when we set a budget, that we have the money allocated and, and we've got it accounted for. So members, <laughs> this is simply a request to wait a few days, get the final numbers, and make a fully informed decision as to whether we should put this bill before the body for a full vote or ask the Finance Committee to take a look at it and budget for the cost. Senator Nino, I'll remind you again that your comments are to be made to the President and not directly to the members. Is there further discussion on the Nino uh, motion. Senator Ortman. Thank you, Madam President. I'm sure no one would intentionally bury a fiscal note. I'm sure that this was an oversight, but I'm wondering if Senator Bach might yield. Senator Bach, will you yield? He does. Senator Ortman. Thank you. Senator Madam, Ortman. Madam President and Senator Bach, um, I, I believe I've read that you've said that this bill, if it comes up for a vote, won't, will not come up for a vote until May. And I'm wondering, is that what you've said, and is that what your intention is, Senator Bach? Uh, once again, I remind you that asking a member what course of action they're going to follow is not in order. But if Senator Bach wishes to respond, he certainly may. Uh, uh, Madam President, Senator Ortman, I have been very clear uh, publicly that the Senate is not going to take up controversial policy provisions on the floor of the Senate uh, for debate until we've passed the Senate budget off the floor. Senator Ortman. Madam President, I appreciate the uh, Senate Majority Leader answering the question. Uh, the reason I ask is I'd like to think that if the bill is not going to be brought up in the Senate again until May, that there should be some time between now and May where the Finance Committee could convene, there could be a fiscal note prepared, and, and then not just the chair of that finance committee would have the information, but all of the members of the committee. I, it's important to be a chairman, and chairmen have an awful lot of power and authority, but we have other members of committees that also should have that information. And so I would like to think that the members would say, let's make sure all the members have the information. We're not going to take a vote on this until May. Let's not 
push this battle before all those uh, questions and fair questions have been resolved. Is there further discussion on the knee now motion? Seeing none, a roll call has been requested. The secretary will take the roll. Senate is under call. Senate is under call. Uh, Madam President, I move that those not voting be excused from voting. Um, Madam, President. President. Madam President. Senator Cohen moves that those not voting be Madam excused President. from voting. Madam President. Roll call. Cannot have a roll call when the board is open. All members having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 30 ayes and 36 nays, the motion is uh, does not prevail, um, and. Um, We're now back on the Bach motion to adopt the committee report on Senate file 925. Further discussion? Madam President, I ask for a roll call. Roll call has been requested. Is there further discussion? Madam President. Senator Hand. Um, Madam President, uh, I would uh, just like to uh, point out that uh, we are about to adopt a committee report and under Masons, and I'm asking for the appropriate section of Masons to be distributed to members, uh, section 673, which makes it clear that when we adopt a committee report, uh, we are in effect endorsing, and this is the quote, the statement or expressing the approval by the body of the substance of the report. And it has the effect of expressing approval, endorsing the findings or recommendations of the report. And so members, what we're doing by adopting the report that's before us is that we are adopting same-sex marriage in Minnesota. And I would like to just point out that this is a remarkable set of circumstances given that the majority has made statements over and over and over again that this session is about the budget, it's about the economy, that that's the priority that we have this year, and yet here we are about to adopt same-sex marriage. 
before we even have a budget finalized by the governor, a proposal, and before the budget bills by the majority have even been introduced into this body, that we are going to take a vote here today on whether or not we should have same-sex marriage introduced in Minnesota. And I think that that speaks very clearly what the priorities are of the majority. And I think that it should be very clear to members what this vote is about. And so I think that as you contemplate your vote, I think you should contemplate it in the context of what we have said and what we have talked about on both sides of the aisle about what the priorities are, the, what this session, what we're trying to accomplish here, which is to pass a budget to deal with the issues before the state. And I've heard members on both sides of the aisle, frankly, talk about how this issue should not be uh, the central issue of the session. And uh, in fact, I've heard members on this side talk about how this would be done after the budget was done. And yet here we are today. And we're going to vote on this bill. Uh, and so uh, I guess uh, uh, I would urge that we do not adopt this report. Uh, and at least if you're in favor of the policy, live up to your commitment to not act on it until the other things that you say are the priority get done. And then at that time, if there is time, and if that's the wish of the majority, to uh, act on that uh, provision at that time. So I would urge that we not adopt the report. Um, <clears throat> for the members, if you look at the uh, committee report that we're considering the motion, um, in the uh, second paragraph, it reads, reports the same back with regard to Senate File 925 with the re recommendation that the report from the Committee on Judiciary shown in the journal for March 2013 be adopted, the committee recommendation being the bill be amended. That's a uh, conditional. And when so amended, the bill to uh, do pass. And then there were uh, amendments adopted. I would also uh, direct members' attention to Section 667 with regard to um, committee reports. <clears throat> the regular reports of committees, particularly the reports of standing committees concerning bills referred to them, usually follow a simple routine. The reports after being received from the committee with the bills are read under the appropriate order of business, which we're on now, and the bills are ordered to second reading where any amendments proposed by the committee shall be considered. Any other amendments may be proposed on second reading. From second reading, the bills are ordered to engrossment and third reading where the question of passage is considered. The reports of the committees as such receive no special or independent consideration but the recommendation of amendments proposed by committees are considered on second reading. The recommendation concerning passage is considered when the bills receive consideration on third reading. Madam is President. there further discussion on uh, the Bach motion to adopt the committee report? Madam President. Uh, Senator Han. Thank you, Madam President. I appreciate your calling attention to the uh, uh, action or the what we're acting on and you did quote it accurately that the bill be amended and when so amended the bill do pass that is what we are acting on with the uh, motion in front of us that when we adopt the rule we are adopting the resolution to pass this bill and members should just be very clear and i think mason's 673 makes that clear that that's what we are doing that we are acting on and agreeing to pass the substance of the bill. Um, Senator Ham, I hesitate to split hairs, but when the sentence reads, the bill be amended and so amended, the bill to pass is in the um, subjunctive mode and not in the declarative. And so this is not a vote on the bill. Is there further discussion on the uh, Bach motion? Senator Nenow. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, the President is correct. This is not a vote on the bill. This is a vote on the substance of the bill. You know, Mason's 473, and I'll just read it. Members can interpret it any way they want. Uh, it's a motion to adopt committee reports. This motion 
has the effect of expressing approval or endorsing the findings or recommendations. The recommendation is to pass. Now, if you endorse that recommendation, vote yes. If you don't endorse that recommendation, vote no. That's fine, but let's be clear on what the vote is. Is there further discussion on the Bach motion to adopt the uh, committee report on Senate File 925? Seeing none, the secretary will take the roll on the Bach motion to adopt. It is under call. Members will please vote. All members having voted, the secretary will close the roll. There being 35 ayes and uh, 31 nays, uh, the motion prevails. Continuing to sixth order of business, second reading of Senate files, uh, uh, Senate file 925, second reading. Thirteenth order of uh, Senate business, uh, announcements of Senate interests without objection. The following senators will be excused from today's session. Senator Tomasoni all day, Senator Stump 11 to 11.20, Senator Latz 11 to, uh, to 11.20. Senator Bach. Uh, Madam President, I move the Senate do now adjourn until Thursday, March 14th, 11 a.m. On that motion, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Senate is adjourned. <laughs>